Well, over the course of the public hearings at the International Court of Justice, thousands of Palestinians have been killed. On January the 10th, the day before the hearings began, Israeli forces had killed more than 23,000 Palestinians. During the two days of the hearings on January the 11th and 12th, Israeli bombardment killed another 351. In the month following those hearings, more than 5,000 Palestinians died. But on February the 16th, the UN's highest court rejected a request for urgent measures to safeguard civilians in Gaza. Since that request was rejected, though, more than 6,000 Palestinians have been killed, raising the death toll to 35,272, with close to 80,000 wounded. Well, earlier, South African lawyer Adela Hassim spoke at the court. She outlined the devastating impact Israel's war has had on children in Gaza. More than 14,000 have been killed. Thousands more have been injured or lost family members. While an estimated 17,000 children are unaccompanied or separated. Nearly all of Gaza's children have been exposed to traumatic experiences, the consequences of which will last a lifetime. Senior political analyst Marwan Bashara, he joins us here in the studio. So Marwan, looking at what's happening at the ICJ, the bottom line, is there, how much hope do you have that the court will step up its provisional rulings and outright call for an end to this war? Look, I thought the South Africans have made again a very good argument. Last time around, they cast the net wide. They tried to make all kinds of legal arguments, very detailed and so on and so forth. This time it was much, much more, focused more focused because they were not supposed to repeat themselves. They're mm -hmm. supposed to talk why now, what happened. But look, it's not just that they are clever and smart and, 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 brought, and have the proof and, and were eloquent. It's because what happened speaks louder than any argument can, we can make in any court, just by citations, mass graves, mass graves. So when they speak, of mass graves, they could easily then invoke Srebrenica, right? I mean, Bosnia, I mean, that's the least you could do is invoke. And Bosnia, far fewer people died than say in Khan Yunus, right? So the idea that uh, Israel has been carrying such war crimes, that it has been doing it with such pattern, with such intent, with clear objective, as, as cited by war cabinet ministers, or rather security cabinet ministers saying annihilation of Rafah Khan Yunus and so on. So all of that is strong. But does it constitute genocide? And is this part of a, 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 a process, a pattern, an intent that th this court, this very particular court can judge? I think that's what it is. And hence the idea that jurisdiction has been visited and revisited again and again. Will this court do that? Now, the South African, again, picked up on the provisional arguments of the last time and saying, you, the ICJ, have ruled that, that yes, this is within your jurisdiction. Well, let us tell you something. Over the past four or five months since you ruled last time, Israel has basically spat on you. Israel has humiliated you. It has defied you. It has violated Everything you asked of it, in fact, they doubled down, they incited more, they killed more, they destroyed more, the Palestinian people of Gaza. Let's talk a little bit about the part of the South African pleading today, which was that the court has powers it has not used so far. Well, here you go into a bit of the legal aspect of the thing that I am no, I mean, I must admit, right? I mean, there's the limits to what I can say, but yes. I think it's... But bro generally speaking, the, the, the idea that this court could do a lot more than it has done. I right? mean, just in terms of issuing orders, nothing else. It doesn't have an army, right? It, it, it cannot implement, it cannot mm. uh, uh, render anything actionable. It can only go back to the United Nations because this is the UN court. 
it can go back to the United Nations Security Council, right? Again, which country is going to veto? The United uh, States. It's, an, it's a politicized process instead of a legal one. Absolutely. But I think the moral, the moral stance of this court, meaning the legal slash moral, will be important in the court of public opinion. And look, uh, why is that important? Even if the United States, you remember, I'm not sure if our viewers around the world remember that the, the national security spokesperson at the White House said it was meritless, baseless, the case of the South Africans Israel. Well, certainly the court disagreed and said there is a plausible genocide happening there. We need to protect, protect the Palestinian people. Now, why is this important? Because the United States is losing credibility. It's losing standing around the world because of its double standard and hypocrisy on the question of Israel. And these are two different things. It's double standard because it treats one situation in one way, another situation another way. Say Ukraine, Palestine, right? Two, hypocrisy because it pretends to be standing for universal values, democratic values, human rights, and putting human rights at the center of its foreign policy, while at the same time providing some $30 billion of arms to a country that is basically now accused, indicted, in carrying genocide. So America is suffering hugely in terms of its credibility and standing because of its defense of Israel and its justification of Israel's war crimes and genocide. And I think that will have consequences on the intermediate and long term on the superpower status of the United States. All right, Marwan, thanks so much for your analysis. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.